Hi everybody, Susan McGarry Glass here. This is what we're gonna make today. It is so easy, really easy project, and it uses so little glass, and the bail part is so easy. Hey, what happened, you guys? <laughs> I shouldn't be able to watch myself, right? Okay, so it's an easy project. It's, uh, it uses a little bit of glass and really easy wire wrapping. So I'm going to take these off of here so that I can lay them on the table and I'm going to tilt the camera down so that you can see my workspace. Let me show you a close up. The first thing you have to do is get a kiln shelf and put your coating on it. Whether you're going to put a uh, kiln wash or whether you're going to use a paper. I use papyrus paper and this piece has been used I think about four or five times. So I just keep using it. You can see it's still holding up as long as I'm careful with it. So I'm going to show you with the blacked back dichroic so it would be really similar to this one. Right? Not transparent but it'll have that black back. And I'll show you what it looks like at the end. All right, I have some little pieces prepared, and there's a little bit of trick to this, just a little bit. If you build a little frame with your longest pieces, sort of a, you're trying to make sort of a tic-tac-toe, just something to build on, um, build up on. So you can kind of see that right there kind of have a tic-tac-toe with the larger pieces then I can add the smaller pieces on top of it and they have something to hold on to. I'm not liking that one. Let me do that one. Can you guys even see that? Let's see. I didn't build a good base and it started to fall on me. Let's put this one right there. There we go. And to keep them from falling, you're just building that, that base up. I want to make sure. Yep, I had that one backwards. And it's nice when you have curved pieces. They don't have to be straight pieces. So this was actually a little strip of dichro that I cut curves out of. Cut little curves so that I'd have some movement in my piece. Maybe like that, and then maybe this one goes right there. All right, that one's done. Then I did some clear pieces, and there is an issue with the clear pieces you're gonna have to be aware of. The dichroic coating is on one side, usually. Almost all the time it's on one side. And what you have to be aware of is dichro doesn't stick to dichro. So I'm making sure that all my dichro is face down right now. So my dichro coating is on the bottom of this piece right here. I want to make sure they're all on the bottom because if I put this on the bottom, dichro on the bottom, I'm going to try and move that over a little bit, dichro on the bottom. Now I've got a good foundation, but now if I do dichro up, and dichro up. The next one I do, if I do dichro down, won't stick to this layer. So it's so important that you keep these all going the same way, or they won't stick to each other and your piece will fall apart when you take it out of the kiln. Has anybody had that issue? Yes. So easy to mix these guys up. All right. So I would just build little pieces, just like I did before. Let's see, I'm gonna move that one over. You don't wanna make it too large. You want it as big as you want the pendant because it's not gonna shrink in size because of our firing schedule. Hmm, I'm, 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 oh, I'm torn. I don't know, maybe that? Okay, that? I have a couple extra pieces, so maybe I'll put some down here. 
And a big part of this is leaving openings so that you can wire wrap. There we go, moved it a little closer. Okay, and the last one, I didn't even wire wrap yet, is this little guy. And it looks a little sloppy, but that's okay, because that's what we're going for, right? But let me show you the back. It's four pieces of glass going around in a, in a square, but the layer on top of it of Dicro, see how the joint is right there? The joint was right there. Well, I put the Dicro piece, same size, across that joint, and the next one across that joint, and the next one across that joint. So let me show you how I did that. I've got my black piece scored, but I don't have it broken, so I can show you. So let's see if you can see that score. You can almost see that score. There it is. I'm going to break up this little piece. Oh, there it is. In half. So it was already been, it's already been scored. All right, I've got my four pieces. I'm going to lay them in a square. I didn't leave enough room, so I'm going to show you on this part of the kiln how I put that together. See how they're kind of overlapping? There you go. Makes a nice little square. Now I take my dichro, and now the dichro is sticking to black, so it doesn't matter if my dichro is up or down, right? I'm not putting dichro to dichro. It's just going to the black, but so that it looks um, consistent, I want to have all the dichro facing the same way, either up or down. So in this case, I'm going to do it up. I did down here. I'm going to do up here. But see that joint? Let's see. That joint right there. I'm going to go over it. See that? That's what's going to make it strong. All right. I'm going to do dichro up and go over that joint. I'm doing the same pattern. I'm just overlapping that joint. And I have one spot left for this piece. See that joint left? That's where I'm going to put it, right there. There you go. So with that, you end up with something like this. For these, you end up with something like this. So this one, blacked back, will look like this. And this one, this dichro on clear, see that? And all the dichro is face down. So I can, I can actually feel the dichro coating. It's a little bit rough. Um, you can always do it, you can wire wrap it this way and have this up. You can have this up. This one looks a little more square than this one. I like these organic shapes a little better. So we fire this, and not too hot. We don't want it to melt down too much. So um, we want that dimension, and we don't want it to try and curl up to three millimeters. So we're only gonna go to 1400 degrees. So what I used was 500 degrees per hour, up to 1400 degrees and hold for 10 minutes and then off. So you got that? 500 degrees per hour to 1400 degrees, 10 minutes and off. If you're working in Celsius, that's 260 degrees Celsius up to 760 degrees Celsius, hold for 10 minutes. Now let's talk wire. You've seen this wire before, I've used it before. <laughs> My favorite is this one. It's 22 gauge brass wire. I get from the hardware store. I get this huge roll. The other one I like is this 24 gauge silver wire for this wire wrapping. This one is a craft wire, um, but you can use fine wire, you can use gold silver, you know, all sorts of things. To me, this is my favorite. The brass, it looks shiny, it stays shiny. Um, it's a good sort of weight to it. All right, I'm gonna cut off a bit. And it's so inexpensive. 
Um, you're not, you know, it's, it doesn't cost anything if you waste a little. So I've got a piece here that I would say is, I don't know, 15 inches, 16 inches, something like that. A little over a foot. And I've just folded it in half, and I'm trying to get a little loop there. And that loop is going to be my bale. That's what I've used to run my cord through. There we go. So I've pinched a nice little bale, and this wire is soft enough that you can do that. Now I'm going to pinch the the head of the the bale, so to speak, right? Pinch the bale, and I'm going to start twisting this wire. And my only real concern is to make that hole big enough for my cord to fit through. All right, I'm going to straighten these out just a little bit, make it a little easier. You find a spot that you want to be the top of your pendant. And I'm going to make my pendant this way with these things pointing down. I'm going to lay my bale. I want it turned sideways so that the cord goes through, right? We want the cord to go through that way. I'm setting it right where I want it. And now I'm going to figure out what's the best way to wrap this through those holes that we created. And so I'm going to go through that hole. Ah. There we go. I want to keep that bale in the in the center spot. But I'm just wrapping it around. Oops. See wrapping it around. Here's what I have so far. Right? I went through that center hole. I'm going to take this one, wrap it around the back and come out through this hole. I keep leaving camera because it's hard to do this so far away from me. All right. Now I've wrapped around twice, going through those holes. Now let me get the other side sort of braced. I've got my bale where I want it, right there. And I'm going to bring this one to the front too. And through that hole. And since each one's going to be organic, you know, it's going to be different. Yours is going to be different than mine. So you're going to figure out how to wire it yourself, you know, the way yours needs to be wired. It doesn't have to be tight. It can be loose. Go around the back. Let me show you the back of that so far. Go through there. Now what I think I'll do, I'm I'm pretty happy with this so far. Just like this. Just like this. I think I'm going to take these two wires together. Sort of bring them to the front. See that? I think I'll go through this hole. It's whatever you feel like doing, right? And when you're when you're doing it, you're going to be able to see the front of it, <laughs> which is going to help you considerably. I'm going to come out this hole. All right. So far, I'm liking that. Now I can actually come up and wrap around the bale. That's one option. I could do some curly cues. So how about if I do one that wraps around the neck of the bale that we made. Spend a little more time making it look pretty. All right, I'm going to cut that off. And this one, I'm going to cut a little shorter. So it's sticking right out the front, the middle right there. See that? And I'm going to curl it. Let me get it started and then I'll show you. All right. So what I'm doing is just curling down my curly pliers. 
And then I'm going to stretch out that little curl. So I've got this little ringlet sort of sticking down the middle of it. Spend a little more time on it. Oh, I don't want that sticking out. I can see it sticking out. There we go. So you can do little curlies in the front. See that little curly? I've got the bail wrapped up. Super simple. Spend a little more time, make it look pretty. You know, something like this. See that little curl in the middle? Here's what the back looks like. Now you see how easy this is. And then this one, I would do something similar. All right, so you can do these in a microwave kiln. It doesn't have to be a necklace. Oh my gosh, it can be an ornament. Um, you can make a wind chime. You can wire several of these together and make a huge necklace. Very little time, very little glass, um, very quick firing, and you've got yourself some beautiful pieces. Enjoy, you guys. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys. Um, soon. Bye.